and welcome to Real to Real, where we review and discuss one movie at a time. I'm your host, Nate Berg. And I'm your co-host, Chris Rose, and we have a fantastic show for you this morning. I uh, see what you did there. On this episode, we are reviewing Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Trailer, please. It was like, um, like a ghost. I saw its eyes, shining white eyes, and it dove down underground. There's strange things going on all over the city. The people behind this are not like you and me. There's a hidden society. It goes back centuries. Yesterday, a wizard entered New York with a case. A case full of magical creatures. And unfortunately, some have escaped. Teeny, he brought Met home. That's Mr. Scamander. He's lost something I'm going to help him find. We're going to recapture my creatures before they get hurt. They're currently in alien terrain, surrounded by millions of the most vicious creatures on the planet. Humans. Magical beasts are terrorizing Nomadges. When Nomadges are afraid, they attack. Contain this, or oh. it'll mean war. Put this on it. But why would I have to wear something like this? because your skull is susceptible to breakage under immense force. Don't panic, but there's absolutely nothing to worry about. I want to be a wizard. Hmm. Ah, yes. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them was directed by David Yates, who also directed the last two Harry Potter films, but most recently, The Legend of Tarzan, which uh, wasn't fantastic. It stars Eddie Redmayne, Colin Farrell, Dan Folger, Ezra Miller, and Catherine Waterston. Waterston. The screenplay was written by J.K. Rowling herself and the one who founded the Wizarding World. Taking place 70 years before Harry Potter enrolled in Hogwarts, the story follows Newt Scamander, who comes to New York where the Wizarding World of Magic is politically unstable and paranoid because of evil magic running rampant, and they're this close to being exposed by the outside world. In his, in his possession is a magic suitcase full of magic beasts with magic abilities, most of whom, due to magical mayhem, escape the magic case, leaving Newt and his magic friends to find them all using magic. Twists and magic and turns and magic and drama and even more magic ensue, leaving a fantastically magical adventure to be had. Fantastically said, my magic co-host. Thank now you. Now let's watch a magical clip from this fantastic movie. You're an interesting man, Mr. Scamander. Thrown out of Hogwarts for endangering human life. That was an accident. With a beast. Yet one of your teachers argued strongly against your expulsion. Now, what makes Albus Dumbledore so fond of you? I really couldn't say. So setting a pack of dangerous creatures loose here was... It was just another accident, is that right? Why would I do it deliberately? To expose wizard kind. To provoke war between the magical and non-magical worlds. Mass slaughter for the greater good, you mean? Yes. Quite. I'm not one of Grindelwald's fanatics, Mr. Graves. And welcome back! This clip gives us a great sample of the main characters in this film. 
Uh, it does. We see Newt's commander, played by Eddie Redmayne, the protagonist, and a klutzy Hogwarts dropout who makes a living hunting magical beasts and writing about them. <laughs> His mistakes cause him to meet Tina Goldstein, played by Catherine Waterston, a failed investigator in the Magical Congress of the United, of the United States. Newt's misadventures also drag in a non-wizard, Jacob Kowalski, played by Dan Folger, into the world of magic. And as the antagonist Colin Farrell plays Percival Graves, director of magical security for the Magical Congress. There's a lot of magic in this movie, folks. <laughs> These characters are all well-developed and backed by a great cast of secondary characters. Yes, the supporting cast really does help the story, filling out the world around the main characters. And on, and on world building, they did a great job expanding the Harry Potter universe, but not losing the viewer as well. That I like. But I can't help but worry that an already giant universe has only gotten bigger. I'm hoping the next four films don't continue this trend. It's time for a commercial, and we'll be back after this message from our sponsor, Hennepin Technical College. <laughs> Three, two... One. With what's happening today with smartphones, everybody has the ability to shoot video. But not everybody has the ability to edit that video and communicate a thought and idea in a professional way with high production value. That's where we come in. This particular program allows a student to do single cam productions, multi cam productions, short films, corporate promos, things like that. So there's a lot of different things that a student can learn in the video production area. What I love here is the practical work that I can learn. It's like a non pressure environment, and I like that about it. All those things that you're not going to learn unless you do it, you can read about it in a book, but that's not going to help you when you're on set. Uh, Rich is so handsome, isn't he? Anyways, welcome back. Some interesting facts about the movie. Fantastic Beasts is the first film in a five-movie series, as confirmed by J.K. Rowling. Also, several members of the cast present to Wand School to learn how to properly use a wand in the movie. Last week, Rowling wanted no one else to play Newt Scrander except for Eddie Redmayne. Thus, no one was even ever considered for the role except him. I'd share other tidbits, but we found a lot of other ones that were just too spoilerific, so please search for them after you've seen the movie. The film was made on a budget of $180 million. On its opening weekend, it generated $74.4 million at the box office, grossing to a total of $219.9 million worldwide in its second week in theaters, proving that Warner Brothers can still make that Potter pot of gold. Gold. We talked to David Yates and J.K. Rowling. We. And we have a clip here from them. This process of working much more closely with the creator of this universe um, and the, the person whose work inspired all of us as we made those movies. Um, it was marvellous being close to that. It was a textbook that Harry Potter used at school. During the writing of that textbook, I became quite interested in the ostensible author, Newt Scamander. Newt Scamander has been travelling the world with a suitcase and collecting rare, endangered, beautiful, exotic, highly dangerous beasts. Um, he studies them. He wants to make sure that they don't become extinct and he keeps them all in his case. If you haven't got tension, if you haven't got conflict, you haven't got a story. Newt's in an alien environment on so many levels. It's America and he's British. He doesn't really understand how the magical world works here, and he accidentally opens a case full of magical creatures in the middle of New York, in arguably the most hostile place he could have done this. It's, you know, so he's, he's blundered hugely, and he's walked into a situation that he doesn't understand at all, something that has implications for the whole wizarding world. I want to know what kind of magic J.K. Rowling is on because she hasn't aged a day. And David Yates, David Yates, he should direct every Harry Potter film from now on. He's done, he, he is so, he's like right 
for this franchise, mm -hmm. especially the tone they're going for now. Yeah, and um, tone, I definitely uh, make sure we don't neglect mentioning the place they set this in, 1920s New York, is absolutely gorgeous, and they very much did a, did a very good job building this up, establishing it, and keeping right. it realistic. Mm -hmm. So reviews, right? I suppose so. Let's do this. Fantastic Beasts is, a magic, is magically fantastic. I love David Yates' style and direction with smooth moving shots, even when it gets chaotic. The story is a good blend of sweet and dark, never favoring one or the other until the time is absolutely right. So yes, J.K. Rowling is a natural at the art of the screenplay. You heard it here first. The performances were terrific all around, and this movie has the best use of CGI I've seen this year outside of the Marvel movies. I give it a five out of five. Fan-freaking-tastic. Unfortunately, I'm not quite as thrilled by the movie. Oh, come on. It's not bad, but I had high expectations for this film, and it just failed to meet them. The character special effects and 1920s New York are all brilliant, but the plot spoils it by being just overstuffed and difficult to follow. Too much bureaucracy, not enough monster hunting. It's fun to see the Harry Potter, the Harry Potter franchise expanded, but I was really hoping they wouldn't continue the franchise's flaws. I'll give the film four out of five reels. I'll just, I'll just have to accept that. <laughs> well, folks, that's our show. Stay tuned till noon when we have some Disney magic coming with Moana, Walt's next princess film with The Rock playing a magical Polynesian demigod, as if he wasn't one already. Mm -hmm. I'm your host, Nate Berg. And I'm your magical co-host. And this was Real to Real. See you at noon, America.